This episode of Spaceflight News will cover another three current topics in the field of astronautics. We start in the United States, where engineers have successfully got access to samples from the asteroid Bennu. Then, we focus on activities of Chinese Tianzhou cargo spacecraft. And in the final topic, we witness the liftoff of Japanese H-2A launch vehicle. Its service is gradually approaching its end, and in one of its last launches, it carried an intelligence satellite. We begin in a very unusual manner, akin to an entertaining TV contest. Try to deduce the purpose of this tool. It is a highly sophisticated screwdriver that NASA specialists had to devise unexpectedly. We have reported on the events involving the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft that returned samples from the asteroid Bennu to Earth on September 24th last year. The airtight sample container was transported to the Johnson Center in Houston, where the sampling head was to be opened. However, Two of the 35 bolts remained fastened, and the engineers had to seek new solutions. A new tool had to be devised, approved, fabricated, and verified to accommodate the restricted space of the glove box. Moreover, the tool could only be composed of materials authorized for use in glove boxes. Furthermore, protocols also had to be established to sanitize the instrument so that it would not contaminate precious samples. As you may have inferred, the outcome is the very tool we asked about at the beginning. Arguably the most crucial part of this tailor-made tool was the screw loosening bit. This part is composed of the finest surgical steel, which is stainless and non-magnetic. It is the most rigid metal that is authorized for use in ultra-clean glove boxes. Prior to loosening the jammed bolts on the sampling head, the engineers had to test the new tool in reality. The primary objective was to ascertain the appropriate torque values to prevent impairing the threads or the bolt. Only after acquiring sufficient experience could they employ the new tool on the flight hardware. The endeavor and preparation put into the project yielded results. The two jammed bolts have been loosened, and the scientists can proceed with the subsequent steps of disassembling sampling head. Next, the samples will be photographed in ultra-high resolution, measured and chemically examined. On the 12th of January at 8.02 Universal Time, the Tianzhou 6 cargo spacecraft departed from Tiangong Station. It had spent a total of 246 days, 10 hours, and 46 minutes at the Chinese orbital complex. Following its departure from the aft docking port of the Tianhe core module, the cargo ship did not remain in orbit for long. It was scheduled to re-enter the atmosphere on the 14th of January, approximately two days later. The Tianzhou had carried away garbage and unnecessary items from the station. Preparations have already begun at the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center for the launch of the next resupply mission to the Tiangong Station. Unless there are any complications, the Long March 7 is expected to launch on the 17th of January at 1426 Universal Time. The Tianzhou 7 cargo spacecraft will be delivered to orbit and dock autonomously with Tiangong Station, where it will stay approximately six months. 
It will provide the station's crew with new supplies and scientific experiments. On the 12th of January, at 4.44 Universal Time, the LE-7A Hydrolox rocket engine and two SRBA strap-on boosters were ignited at the Tanagashima Space Center. This enabled the H-2A launch vehicle to lift off and embark on its flight to orbit. The payload consisted of the IGS Optical 8 Intelligence Satellite. The IGS Information Gathering Satellite program was initiated by Japan in 2003 and comprises two types of satellites, optical and radar. The newly launched satellite is the last optical satellite of the current generation. It will take photos with a resolution of approximately 40 centimeters from an orbit of 500 kilometers for three years. This was one of the last missions for the H-2A launch vehicle. In the second quarter of this year, it will launch a radar satellite for the IGS system, and in the third quarter, it will launch the GOSAT GW satellite dedicated to air pollution monitoring. This will be not only the last launch of the H-2A, but also the last ever launch of an H-2 family rocket. Thank you for your attention to today's episode of Spaceflight News. We are delighted in your interest in space news, and to ensure you do not miss future episodes, kindly consider subscribing to our channel. Additionally, you can find other interesting news on our profile on Social Network X, formerly known as Twitter. The link can be found in the video description.